Hello everyone and welcome to the Vortex where lies and falsehoods are trapped and exposed. I'm Michael Voris coming to you from perhaps the ugliest building in the world, the Cathedral of Los Angeles Archdiocese, the Cathedral of Our Lady of the Angels. Completed in 2002 at a whopping $250 million, it was forced on the people of Los Angeles by the egocentric and modernist Archbishop Cardinal Roger Mahoney. And for the record, $250 million in 2002 would be the equivalent of $350 million in today's dollars in 2017. But Mahoney was no stranger to enormous sums of money, having to pay out $660 million, the largest to date, for the homosexual priest sex abuse victims, which he covered up for years. So between this building and hiding of the sex crimes of his gay clergy, Mahoney cost the archdiocese one billion dollars, and that's just in financial terms. Only God can calculate the cost in souls that his wicked reign racked up. Men like Mahoney, and there are many of them, hate the church and want to change it and made this the entire object of their long clerical careers. They network with each other and promote each other and cooperate in ways that enhance their ability to destroy the faith. While lightning rod types like Mahoney and say Bernadine in Chicago and Weakland in Milwaukee and so forth get lots of attention, their handiwork is carried out by lesser known names who manage to fly beneath the radar for the most part. Men, for example, like Richard S. Vosco, a priest in his mid 70s from the Diocese of Albany under the then notorious homosexualist Bishop Howard Hubbard. Bosco has made a career going around not saving souls as a priest ought, but rather destroying Catholic architecture, saying that the old looking traditional churches need to be swept away and new churches arise that reflect the new church of post Vatican II. While it was Mahoney who forked out the third of a billion dollars for this hideous edifice, it was Vosco who oversaw the construction of it. Father Bosco has been brought in on many projects all around North America to essentially wipe out the old and bring in the new. Bishops give him carte blanche, along with various pastors, to brainwash their parishes into thinking that tabernacles should not be visible, altars need to be turned into tables, statues need to hit the dumpsters, communion rails need to go, and sanctuaries be pulled out into the middle to, in their words, quote, enhance the worship experience, because apparently having God physically present on the altar isn't enough. Bosco travels from diocese to diocese, charging at least $15,000 a plan to shape, oversee, and implement what has come to be known as recovations, where instead of renovating church buildings, he wrecks them and wrecks the faith. He has renovated some of the more noteworthy cathedrals in the country, as well as numerous parishes where he has lied to parishioners about what the church says about liturgy, to fool these people into shuffling the tabernacle off to a closet, ripping out the pews and replacing them with individual chairs, and brainwashing them about their worship space, saying that it is God's house, but hey, it's our house too. That's actually the name of one of his articles. In interview after interview and presentation after presentation, he makes clear that in his treasonous mind, all that existed in the church before Vatican II was wrong and needs to be done away with. He even told one parish congregation that all their concern about statues and the tabernacle and all that didn't really matter. He said, and this is almost a quote, life's too short for worrying about such things and everybody goes to heaven anyway, so why got all worked up over all of this, close quote. His particular attack involves destroying the beauty of actual church buildings. Others in the church attack her in other ways, but whether it's architecture or art or theology or music or a host of other avenues, Catholics need to wake up and understand that the church is under attack from within. These men, clerics inside the church, they hate the faith. They hate the church, but they have chosen for their plan of attack to remain in it and seize control of the institutions and slowly transform things. It's a much more diabolically clever plan than Luther's Protestant revolt. At least he had the integrity to leave the church and set up his own thing. These men are much more sneaky. They keep their robes and offices and titles and custodianship over the physical plants and buildings and so forth, all the while twisting and perverting the teachings of the faith 
and the presentations of the faith up to and including the actual buildings. The funny thing is this, they aren't even really that secretive about it. Bosco freely admits that his goal is to free the church from its shackles of medieval darkness, his words, and his work is done on the level of physical construction of the buildings to rid people of any sense of the divine and make it all about the people. They silence dissenters from their view and they label them, marginalize them, and demonize them. At some point, of course, all the rebellion in the church had to come physically into appearance as well as in her churches and in her cathedrals. Like every single aspect of church life, the church, the faith, needs to be able to raise the minds and hearts to heaven. Well, so too does the architecture of actual church buildings. This is what accounts for the glory and the majesty of so many of the world's most beautiful Catholic cathedrals and churches. They were built, sometimes over the course of centuries, with an eye to the reality of being beautiful and an avenue to the divine. But the new rebellious church that has been erected in the middle of the authentic church cares nothing about God. It is nothing more than a social self-help agency that uses the trappings of religion to try and institute its radical view of man as supreme. The devil built this monstrosity, and as he, he built it as a temple to himself, it represents a supplanting of all that is right and true and good and beautiful and glorious about the Catholic faith and replaces it with a twisted, perverted aping of the authentic faith. Don't think for a single moment that Satan does not have disciples right in the midst of the church. He does. He has had them all the way back to Judas, who is now burning in hell. He too desired to fashion the truth to suit his own needs and views. And though he was an apostle, he lost his apostleship, as we hear in the Acts of the Apostles, and he had to be replaced. Unfortunately, even though he has received the punishment of his guilt, as is recorded in the words of Holy Thursday Mass, his traitorous ilk still run wild throughout the church, seeking to destroy it. Catholics who are still sleeping, you need to wake up to what's going on. Where are all the Catholics as dedicated as people like this, Mahoney and Vasco and their whole crowd? Why is it that so many people associated with the church have such zeal and passion for destroying her and so few have any zeal or passion for defending and advancing her? Every one of us is going to have to give an account, an answer to this question when we depart from this earth. Coming to you from a cathedral that is so costly and lavish, not to mention demonically inspired, that it quickly earned the nickname the Raj Mahal or the Taj Mahoney after India's Taj Mahal. Michael Voris for Church Militant, God love you.